2014 Pulitzer Prize for Poetry. He won for his book, Three Sections, and received the American Academy of Arts and Letters Award last month. One of our finest poets, he has received grants from the Guggenheim Memorial Foundation, the New York Foundation for the Arts, and the National Endowment for the Arts. And now, Vijay Shishadri. You know, it's an incredibly moving and uh, profound experience to get this award, and I am so grateful to India Abroad and uh, to everybody here in this room. I, uh, you know, uh, years ago, I was, uh, when I published my first book, I was invited to give a reading by a group called the Network of Young Indian Professionals. And the Network of Young Indian Professionals was basically a, a, a socializing network, which is a nice way of saying that it was a party scene and a pickup scene for you know young people in India. I'm sure there are many people here who belonged to it at that time. And, uh, and, uh, but because they were the children of immigrants, they uh, wanted to have something virtuous to start out their partying. So they invited Shashi Tharoor and myself to give a reading before their uh, partying could start. And they rented a hall. And Shashi and I, you know, who of course has gone, to great notori gone on to great notoriety in India, but at that time was living here and working for the UN, gave our readings and we had a Q&A. And at the Q&A, a young woman got up and, uh, and with a tone of challenge in her voice said to me, there's nothing Indian about your work. And uh, I was kind of prepared for this because this was sort of a high water mark in American identity politics when it was sort of assumed that writers should write about their own experience in a naturalistic way, their backgrounds, their histories, their ethnicities. And I said to her, India functions in my poetry the way God functions in Pascal's universe. It is everywhere present, but nowhere apparent. No. And I want to point out three things about this story. First of all, you know, the cleverness of my response. <laughs> Very witty, right? You know, and I kind of like that, and I've always, you know, and, uh, and, you know, that put her in her place, right? You know, second, I want to point out kind of the uh, truth of this, which is that India, for all of us, is visible or invisible, a tremendously powerful presence in our lives. And the third thing I, the third thing I want to point out is the reference to Pascal. You know, we creatures, we Indians of the Indian diaspora are a hybrid people. You know, and there's a melancholy quality to our being a hybrid people. We are neither here nor there. And so it was appropriate for me to bring Pascal into the same sentence with India. And uh, my father came here in 1955, and he got his PhD, and he brought us here in 1959. And he was very much a part of uh, the history of the Indian Republic. In fact, you know, he was born at the time of... Uh, the Rowlett Acts and the Quit India movement, so you could say that his life spanned the actual history of the Republic rather than its juridical history. He died this past uh, winter at the age of 90. And uh, he was filled with a melancholy about India and about the loss of India. And, uh, and he was always looking back. He came here when he was 30 and he was always looking back to India. And, uh, but about him and I think about the rest of us and about the Indian diaspora, I have to say we are a hybrid people and we are both here and there, which gives us an incredible strength 
and uh, an incredible sort of global consciousness which we can use to uh, do good works in the worlds we live in and do good work for the world we came from. And uh, I hope I've tried to live up in some small way to that. And uh, I want to thank everybody. Thank you.